Good evening from uh, the newsroom. Our news uh, summary for this uh, Thursday, 11th uh, of March. The trial in the anti-corruption case against uh, Mukesh Valabji and Sarah Rone did not start today as was scheduled. In court this morning, Chief Justice Ronnie Govinden said that the trial cannot start until a recusal case brought against him by the defence uh, is resolved. The trial in the anti-corruption case should have originally started on the 11th of last month, but was pushed to today. In court this morning, Chief Justice Govinden said the recusal case must be resolved first before the trial could start. The recusal case is in front of Judge Buran, who is expected to hear it on Monday. On that day, he will listen to an appeal by the defence against a court decision that said they cannot bring further evidence to support their cause for recusal. If the decision on that day is against them, they have their right to appeal again. If it is in their favour, then the judge will hear the original case for recusal. On its part, the Anti-Corruption Commission's lawyers made it clear in court that they are ready for the trial and have summoned their witnesses. The two suspects in the most recent case of suspected money laundering, a 48-year-old businessman and a 23-year-old man described as his right-hand man, will remain under, under police custody until Monday. This is after their lawyer argued that the court should not accept an application to further their remand. A 48-year-old businessman, along with a 23-year-old man who prosecution described as his right-hand man, will remain on remand under police custody until Monday morning. This is in the case of suspected money laundry against them. Their lawyer, Basil Wawo, objected to the court accepting the prosecution's application for further remand on the basis that they had just been served with a copy before the case was heard, that this is against his client's rights to liberty and that the prosecution did it deliberately knowing that the court would side with them and keep his clients on remand until he has had time to go over the application. In her response, State Prosecutor Nisa Thompson stated that the law merely states that the respondent should be served a copy of the application, no mention of timings whatsoever, and that these such cases take time due to complexities. And Judge Basil Adlin, who's presiding the case, said that he does agree with the defense lawyer's point with regards to the need for applications to be served in a timely manner. He, however, stated that the reasons he gave keep the two suspects under police custody the first time round still stands. The defense stated that if the judge relies on his ruling on the first remand application for which he had already given a judgment, it would be functus official, meaning relying on cases already dealt with. Judge Basil Adlin, however, did rule that the two suspects be remanded until Monday morning so that their lawyer has ample time to go over the application to keep them in police custody. The price of fuel has increased by 44 cents per litre this Monday. This is the second price increase in three weeks. The first, which was a 66 cents increase, was on the 17th of April. This means that in the last three weeks, the price of fuel has gone up by 1 rupee 10 cents. The price currently stands at 21 rupees 35 cents. CPEX CEO Sarah Romain explains that this rise is due to an increase on the international market and that local fuel prices will always follow international market prices. Tomorrow, the 12th of May, is uh, International uh, Nurses' Day. The Minister responsible for Health, Peggy Vidot, says that Seychelles proudly commemorates this day. In a message for this occasion, she says that this is at a time when the Ministry, spurred by its own internal assessment, which demonstrates significant room for quality care improvement and stimulated also by the innumerable appeals from the public to improve the quality of care is doing its level best to be as responsive as possible to all health service users. Minister Vidot says that this year's theme, Our Nurses, Our Future, chosen by the International Council of Nurses, calls on nurses, health leaders, policy makers and decision makers to reflect on lessons learned from the COVID pandemic and translate these into actions for the future and ensure that nurses are protected, respected and valued. 
it is a call for investment in nursing. Kudos to the many nurses who put their patients first and who every day go further than the extra mile to show how much they really care, Minister Vidot says as he congratulates them as they are all nurse heroes. Nurses have always been the rudder of the healthcare system. Your role is more important today than ever before. We are therefore equipping you with the skills you require to handle current and future challenges. Investment in your education, training and well-being is investment in a stronger healthcare system and in the well-being of our country. We cannot achieve the health targets of the sustainable goals without your active contribution and participation. The minister salutes all the nurses who have answered the call to a life of service and says that their dedication and commitment to the cause is indeed a cause for celebration. The government is determined to support further nursing progress in all areas. Now is the time for us to reinvent nursing. She ends saying she is proud that they are all in this together. Three teams comprising of a total of seven uh, people are taking part in the fifth edition of the hackathon competition organized by the Department of Information, Communication Technology and hosted by the University of Seychelles. This is part of activities to celebrate World Telecommunication and Information Society Day on the 17th of May. The participants, mostly from the Seychelles Institute of Technology, SIT, plus one individual, have been given 24 hours until 2 p.m. tomorrow to develop a mobile application for mobile phones or computers. The competition, sponsored by Cable & Wireless, is taking place at the University of Seychelles uh, campus at Ons Royale. This year's theme is Smart Finance, where teams must produce an app that will help the user either in budgeting, saving, investing or debt management. When launching the competition in the presence of Vice President Ahmed Afif, who is responsible for the ICT department, the Principal Secretary of ICT, Benjamin Chopi, said this activity will help to promote software development and programming. We view such competitions as a means of showcasing local talent in this area of promoting general interest in this field and attracting new people to it. Given the high penetration of mobile phones in Seychelles, which now borders 200%, it is fitting that the development challenge will be focused on creating a new mobile-based solution for a specific problem, which you will get to know shortly. We also hope that this will help give more impetus to the development of more local mobile apps. A delegation from the National Assembly recently visited China for a parliamentarian engagement, which included several other African countries. The delegation included four MNAs, two each from the two political parties represented at the National Assembly, Cindy Arisol, Nobel Oiseau, Wilbe Emini, and Sébastien Pillay. The delegation was headed by the leader of the opposition in the National Assembly, Sébastien Pillay, and he says the visit was a very fruitful one for Seychelles. We were able to interact with our counterparts in China and other African countries in uh, that we were able to understand the context of uh, the modernization that is going on, the digitalization of the Chinese economy, and how this digitalization can be advantageous to us as a country, as a small nation that has a strong relationship and partnership with, uh, with the Chinese people. And uh, putting more accent on the win-win um, uh, relationship that we have, but also find uh, common avenues for common benefit for the people of Seychelles and the people of China. And I think there's been a lot of uh, fruitful exchange from that visit. And we hope that we can, uh, we can continue this, uh, this level of interaction and uh, create uh, a platform for continuous engagement between our parliament and the National People's Congress. President Wevel Ramkalawan, who is visiting Abu Dhabi, has held talks on two major national development projects. They include the Seychelles Airport and the Porta. Regarding the development of the airport, Mr. Ramkalawan, along with an Abu Dhabi technical team, reviewed the concept and work carried out so far. 
It was uh, agreed that a technical uh, team from both uh, Seychelles and Abu Dhabi will conduct final planning work. After that, the airport concept proposal will be presented to the Cabinet of Ministers for approval. For the development uh, of uh, the port, a technical team from Abu Dhabi Ports will undertake a working visit to Seychelles before the end of this month for a complete uh, audit of the port. They will then decide the way forward. And with this, uh, we end this uh, news uh, summary. We'll be back at 8 for the news uh, bulletin in Creole. Have a very pleasant evening.